Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Fantastic Nature Adventures. I'm your host, Nat Ermson, and this is the first episode that I made while being at my new college in Bar Harbor, Maine. So, my friends and I went out to Acadia National Park to this little marshland area right near where our school is, and there's a ton of salamander eggs in this marshy area, and we decided to go at night and look for some female salamanders that may have actually been the ones laying these eggs. And luckily enough, I was able to spot one of the females and catch her. And so yeah, this video is all about this one salamander that I found. The spotted salamander is a super cool species. I haven't really done a full episode on the spotted salamander so far. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Okay, out here in the field with my friends, we found a spotted salamander, which is a, um, a decent sized um, spotted salamander, not like that big. This one I'd say is, what, five inches I'd say? I don't know. The spotted salamander can get to almost 10 inches long, making it the largest salamander species in Maine. However, this specific one was only about five, maybe six inches long, but definitely still large enough to be considered a full-grown adult. This is a mole salamander. So it's, um, it's in the mole salamander family, and Bistomatidae is the family name. And it is a, um, like mostly a subterranean species, so mostly they live in like little burrows under logs and all that. Um, but we have been out here looking at salamander eggs and I just came across this little guy, probably a female because the eggs, yeah, so this is probably a female. Um, you can see that it has like this sort of, oh boy, did not mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy! Whenever you're holding amphibians, you got to make sure that your hands are wet because their skin is permeable, meaning that they do breathe through their skin, and the oils in our skin will clot up those little holes in their body, and you obviously don't want that to happen, because then they won't be able to breathe, and they'll probably die. She is very hard to hold on to, as you can see, like she's super slippery, and she's obviously wet, she was in like the stream. Um, but you can see that it's a very streamlined animal, and it has this paddle <laughs> fin on its tail there. But that's kind of how they swim through the water because their tail acts similar to a fish's tail and that's how they sort of propel themselves through the water. But usually when they're not laying their eggs and all that, they will just be under logs and rocks. Um, and I've caught them before in other parts of Maine with just them under like logs in the summertime. But in the spring, it's their breeding season and they're out here laying some eggs. So yeah, um, what else can I say about this? They eat a lot of invertebrates. That's mostly their main source of food is invertebrates. Uh, so yeah, they're pretty opportunistic little, little guys. They'll feed on mostly anything they can put in their mouth. But this guy, you can see the mouth is not, or their head is, her head is not that big. Any animal that she can get in her mouth will be potential prey item for her as long as it's not poisonous or whatever. And um, yeah, some threats. I think this might be a poisonous species. Um, I would assume that there are some birds and maybe fish, larger fish that can feed on this species. But um, I'm pretty sure because of these yellow spots that it has aposematism, which means that they are brightly colored because of their poison to warn potential predators that they are not good to eat. So I was definitely right about the fact that spotted salamanders are actually toxic. They release this sort of milky white mucusy toxin from their skin, quite similar to that found in many species of toads, such as the cane toad and American toad. However, they only really emit this toxin when they're feeling especially threatened, such as when they're being attacked by predators. So luckily it did not emit this mucusy stuff while we were handling it. But there are a lot of species in the Northeast United States that will go after the spotted salamander, such as raccoons, birds, snakes, a lot of predatory animals. And in that circumstance, if a predatory animal is trying to attack a spotted salamander, it will release this mucusy toxin. 
So there you guys go, that's the spotted salamander, the largest species of salamander that lives in Maine. Personally, I thought seeing this species in the water was super, super cool because I've caught them before under logs and rocks, but seeing them swim around in the water really shows you how much of a mix amphibians are between reptiles and fish. Obviously, in the evolutionary time scale, fish evolved into amphibians and then amphibians into reptiles, basically, but it's just super cool to see that these salamanders are really just like kind of a missing link between these two classes of animals. So yeah, I just thought that was super cool to see in real life. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Obviously I'm going to keep making episodes up here in Maine. Now that I go to college up here, I have access to Acadia National Park and it's beginning to get warmer. So I'll definitely be seeing more and more species that I can catch and make videos about. But yeah, until the next episode, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next episode.